Hey guys, in this video we've got Diff Shimming 101 and this is a response video to a bunch of questions that we've got. We've done the differential videos and show you how they're put together and the science behind it and what makes them work. In this video we're going to go over how you're supposed to shim them to get them the most life that can be. And there's some tricky stuff in there and some of it can be adjusted and some can't. It's just the design. And in this video we're going to get after that and show you what's up. Check this out. All right, to begin with, let's get a differential out. And in this one, we're going to use an Arma EXB differential. And this one is used, but it's used lightly. We did check it out. It does work good, but there is some spacing issues. And you can hear it in there as it clatters back and forth between the pinion and the differential, house, the differential housing itself or the ring gear in there. You can hear it clatter back and forth a little, showing that there's space between the teeth. And too much space is a bad thing. Now. The thing about these things, guys, is they're built with plastic, okay? And plastic does not always hold shape the way it should. I would recommend aluminum ones, but the plastic ones are what we get, and most of them are in pretty good condition, so they do hold up, but they do require maintenance. Now, they do put out, with some of the newer EXBs, they put out the shim kit, and it shows you this. And I'll get you a close-up of that one. And this shows you basically how you're supposed to run it. And, of course, the newer ones are coming with actual diff rings. And there's three in each kit. So we just cut this one open. There's three in there. And this is sent by Arma in the newer kits. Because as things seat, as the bearings run a little bit and they get comfortable in their position for the motion and movement and whatnot, it changes them just a little. And then they seat in and they stay there that's when you shim these. In this video, we're going to dig right down inside of one of these. We're going to pull the differential out. We're going to get it all, all the way out of the mechanism here, show you how it seats in there, how things sit. We'll get the, the pinion out, and we'll show you the spacing, what you should have in there, and then we'll put it together and show you how they should go in and how you check them to make sure you got them in roughly the right place. It's impossible to get a caliper down in there, so it's a lot of it is eyeball and listening. So let's get on the bench and get started.
Okay, I want to take a second to talk about another direction you can go with the shimming, and it's kind of important, but there are limitations to what you can do with it. Now, while we have this torn down, we have your pinion, which is the small unit here that drives the actual differential, and it's got the spur gear on this side, and when it's in the differential, you can see a small gap between the two right there. And I'll show you a close-up of this, but you can see a small gap there. And what that means is when you put this in the differential housing, it sits up against these bearings here, okay? And that space varies between differentials, but on this one and some of the other ones too, guys, this sits right down in here like so. It drops down in place and sits snugly against that bearing. Okay, that leaves this much shaft sticking out the bottom. Now this is a 45 taper on these. So when you have a look at these, it's not a straight cut gear. It's at an angle, okay? Which means the spacing between these two changes the spacing between the teeth. And the beautiful part of that is, when you have it sitting in a per perfect spot like this and the teeth aren't exact exactly engaged the way they should be, you can put a shim on here too and bring it out from the housing as long as it doesn't hit the diff. See what I'm saying there? So if you're having trouble getting the spacing, the problem is with these, and this is kind of, I'm gonna to touch on this again, guys, because this is really important. These bearings, and have a look at this. This is a destroyed bearing that we've got here. And there's the race. And see how small that gunnel is that the bearings roll in? Well, in these things, the that is not a great thing. It's not encased like the automotive ones. It's just kind of running in a channel. And that channel's not all that deep on either race. Now, the thing is, is when you shim this part, you don't want to put too much pressure in from the sides. These, since they are ball bearing, they wiggle. See there? I'm holding the race, but it moves that much. Okay. The shims are designed to take up that slack, but not create pressure, okay? Because that'll run it on the side of the gunnel, it'll wear out the balls, and it'll come apart, just like the picture you just saw with the race that was destroyed there. That whole situation there, that was from side pressure. When I put it in there, I shimmed it, I put too much pressure on, and lost the front bearing. These are designed to run in the channel. They're not designed to be pressed up against that. Now, it does work but it's really hard on the components, so I wouldn't recommend it. The idea of the shim is to be able to adjust this inside the housing to set it where you want it to be, but not push hard enough to destroy the bearings. You have to get them in there so it won't move side to side, but it's not super tight. That's really important on that. So if you reach a point in your differential where this is already down to its best situation where it spins freely, but it can't move side to side, that's as good as that gets, guys. That's it. That's when this one comes into play, and you can adjust it down a little bit to engage the teeth more. Blink. Just like that. If you have to adjust it all the way down till it hits the housing, you've got problems, and they're not easily solvable because with the way this is designed and the way this sits in there, that dictates where you're gonna put your shims. So try shimming this first, because that's what they recommend. When you first get your car, and this is, this is the thing, I recommend this to everybody. When you first get your car, have a look at the diffs. I mean, just pull the cover, have a look, and see what the spacing's like. If the spacing is good, the teeth look like they're engaged well, Great, that's what they should be, but that doesn't mean they will be that way. If you need to slam a shim in there to get the spacing right, do so right away. Okay, don't wait. But if everything's going good and you've run up for a while, pop the cover and have a look if that spacing changes. And what I mean by that is, when this sits in the housing, okay, it'll pop in like so, and now it's in there that doesn't mean it'll stay there. You might have a little gap in the casing here. The race might not be sitting in exactly the right spot, but it sits down and it looks good and it's gonna work. But as it vibrates and as it throws torque back and forth, these pieces will settle into place. Once they settle into place, which is a battery or two, pull the cover and look and see if it changed. If it changed, that's when you throw your extra shim in because once they're settled into place, they'll stay there because they settle into a comfortable position that they will keep. The upside and the downside to this is 
this doesn't get any direct pressure. Now, what I mean by that is if the wheel was connected here and it bounced on the bearing, then that would shake things around a little bit and it would change how this rides, but it doesn't, it drives a dog bone. So this won't necessarily get shaken into place really fast because there's no lateral pressure on it other than the inertia of this bouncing up and down in the car. Once you get that in place and it runs for a while, have a good look at it and make sure that this has settled into place and your gearing is still good. This should not shift side to side in there and you can put some pretty good pressure on it to test it. But if it moves, you definitely need a shim right away. Um, if your spacing is not where it should be and it is already tight, that's where this shim comes into play. This one didn't need it, so I didn't add one. I did try to get a seven millimeter on here and the seven millimeter didn't fit. I don't have any eights in here right now to give it a try. I already used them and so now I'm waiting for those to arrive. So in the video, when we put it together, we did not add this shim, but it's pretty simple. Slide it on, slip it into the housing, done. It's easy peasy and there's nothing to it. But don't forget guys, when you go ahead and put this cup on, suck the slack up with your thumb and pull it in and tighten it down. Don't squeeze it because those gunnels that those ball bearings run in are fairly small on these kind of ball bearings and it will wear the material out faster. If it's not spinning freely, you've got it too tight, but it shouldn't move back and forth. Hey guys, this is the point in the video where I generally ask you to subscribe, like, and share, but I'm just going to ask you to bash that like button. You know, the like button helps more than you possibly know. And it's just an easy thing to do. Reach down, click done deal, and it helps our content spread to others. If you like what you've seen, if you find any value in the channel, please hit that like button and help us help others. So if you guys have anything you want to add to this, this differential shimming video, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. Hey guys, I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying, keep wrenching guys. Thank <laughs> you.